Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Evening Prayer. Well, <clears throat> I have been, I'm like where, Di I'm kind of going a little bit where Diamond Dustification was the last couple of days, but he's since come out of it, that spiritual depression. And you know, it's, it's just the constant battle and the, and the weariness that comes from it, the, the constant debate, the constant struggle, constantly trying to help people understand that don't want to understand, constantly addressing this, the same thing over and over again, constantly being, just having it be, being berated all the time. And, you know, it's not that big of a deal. It's just that when it's all the time, every minute of every day, it's, there's no winning scenario here. Uh, so, you know, I have a flesh body. I get weak. I get tired. And it was so funny because just now, before I clicked the button to start this video, God strengthened me. And because I, I was in question, I prayed on the way to my brother's house, prayed on the way back. Lord, if I'm incorrect in what I'm doing, correct me, humble me, straighten me out. Because I know what these people, uh, these other people are preaching, and I know where, what they're doing and where they're coming from, and I know it doesn't match scripture. But you know, there's still a time, there's, it still hits you inside. The desire isn't to hurt people's feelings. The desire isn't to smash people's hopes and dreams. I'm about to do that, uh, unfortunately. But there's a good reason for it. Uh, and it's not for anybody's hopes and dreams. It's to reestablish a proper way of thinking on this. Because no matter what we think and no matter what our desires are, we have to stay in the truth. And we have to be honest with ourselves. And it may hurt to be honest with ourselves. Um, I did a video here a while back about do babies go to heaven, do pets go to heaven. And you know, guys know I have it set, so I have to approve all, all internet links because people keep putting porn in the, in the comment sections. So somebody posted a link, and I'm not going to tell, tell you the name of their channel. I, I do hope that they take the opportunity to watch this prayer because this is for them. Um, they posted a link for a video. I, I deleted it because... The guy in the video was completely wrong in what he he was quoting, and he misquoted the very first scripture that he, he didn't even really quote it. Um, it's on the screen. It's Ecclesi he didn't say where it was in Ecclesiastes. He just said it was in Ecclesiastes. Completely misquoted the scripture and misunderstood what it's referring to. And it's Ecclesiastes 3, 19, 20, and 21. Um... So I watched a little bit past that, and it's like, no, because this person says conclusively, yes. I can't say conclusively, yes, animals go to heaven. I can't. I, I can't, in good honesty, and being an adult, born-again Christian, trying to give you guys the truth from the Scripture, I can't tell you, yes, your pets will go to heaven. What I can do is lead you to Scripture, and I have a whole list of Scriptures I'm going to leave in the, in the description for you to go read. You have to make your own decision on this. This is between you and him. I can't tell you, yes, Fluffy will go to heaven. I can't tell you that. Because if I did, then I put myself in a position to be lying. And I can't do that. I can't, in honesty, do that to you. Um, I would rather hurt your feelings by giving you the truth than hurt your feelings later by giving you a lie and then we find out that we were incorrect. So this particular scripture that this guy quoted um, and he completely, completely quoted it wrong. And Ecclesiastes 3, 19 says, For what happens to the sons of men also happens to animals. Now this was the verse he quoted, and he misquoted it. But he missed the next two verses that explain the situation. For what happens to the sons of men also happens to animals. One thing befalls them. As one dies, so dies the other. Surely they all have one breath. Man has no advantage over the animals, for all is vanity. Now, if you guys remember, I did all of Ecclesiastes in a playlist. That's all he quoted. He didn't even quote the whole verse. And he misquoted it. You read that, and you can say, okay, sure. Well, you know, If you're listening to the video, okay, sure, that makes sense to me. But when you go look at it, and you do what you're supposed to do as a, as a Christian, as a faithful Christian... Go test the spirits and test these things. And you read the scriptures, you realize it's talking about something completely different. So verse 19 is setting the, the stage. Well, man and animal have the same flesh. Both their flesh came from the dust. Both their flesh goes to the dust. That verse says nothing about going to heaven. Now read the next verse. Verse 20. All go to one place. 
All are from the dust and all return to the dust. This is talking about the body, the flesh body. Animal dies, goes to dust. Man dies, goes to dust. It's verse 21 that clarifies. Who knows the spirit of the sons of men, comma, which goes upward, and the spirit of the animal, comma, which goes down to the earth? It's a question. Now, people right off the bat will say, well, but see, he's asking, you know, who knows these spirits? How can you say you know them or know where they're going to go? It's not what he's saying. Look at how the sentence is constructed. He's telling you, the question is, who knows these spirits? Do you know the spirit of man? Do you know the spirit of the animal? But he clearly tells you within the question where each one goes. Who knows the spirit of the sons of men which go upward? And the spirit of the animal which goes down to the earth. He doesn't say, does it go down to the earth? He says, which does go down to the earth? He doesn't say the, man, the spirit of man, you know, does it go upward? He says, it does go upward. He's making a proclamation, not asking that question. The question is, who knows them? But see, when you don't read, you get into this misunderstanding like this, and you get end up getting into a, a misquoting of Scripture, and it's so dangerous to do that. Guys, this is why I do what I do. And you know, sometimes it really torques my heart to have to break people's bubbles like this. But the truth is the truth. You can get mad all you want. You can, you know... Yell at me all you want. Get upset at me all you want. It doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is, Scripture's clear. And you have to go and read it and then go into prayer and d decide for yourself what you want to believe. I cannot tell you animals go to heaven when they die. I cannot tell you our animals will be raptured. I can't honestly tell you that. Just like I can't honestly tell you when the rapture is. I could tell you it's in three days. But I'd be lying. Because I don't know. As a born-again believer, I don't know. Reading the scriptures and studying them the way I have, I don't know. I can't lie to you. I'm not going to lie to you. And if it hurts your feelings to be telling you this and showing you these scriptures, I would rather your feelings be hurt by me giving you the truth than your feelings be hurt worse later when you find out I lied to you. I will not do that to you guys. I love you guys too much and care for you too much for that. Now, this same thing, and of course, this all stemmed from a video I did a couple, two days ago, or day before yesterday, or yesterday uh, when I had mentioned, and that video, we're talking about that girl with the kick in the horns, and I was talking about that girl, wasn't about the tongues, it was about that girl and her running off at the mouth, but somehow it turned into a subject of tongues. The same rule applies. I can't lie to you based on people's feelings. And this goes not just for that, this goes for everything. I can't lie to you and tell you, yes, exactly what you believe is what's true if it goes against Scripture. We have to use Scripture as our guideline. We have to use Scripture as our plumb line. So in any subject, not just what we just talked about, in any subject, you have to go to Scripture and prove it with Scripture. And you can't do it with a partial verse or one verse. You've got to take multiple scripture into account to prove the subject. Otherwise, you cannot say, yes, that's what that is. And I'm just being honest. I'm not trying to break anybody down or burst anybody's bubble. Unfortunately, it's going to do that. And this is the part I hate about doing this, is that I, I have to break pe people's bridges down because they get themselves built up so high on a false understanding. Usually it's based on somebody else that told them that because and they didn't go read. And I have to kick the supports out from under it and bring them back down to the earth and say, no, that's not what the Bible says. This is what the Bible says. Um, it's unfortunate, but it's a hazard of the job. And, you know, I truly hate doing it. I don't enjoy it. But, again, I, I would rather hurt your... If I hurt your feelings by telling you the truth now, when we stand in heaven, you'll appreciate it. But if I lie to you, and then we go stand in heaven. And then you, f hey, wait a minute, that Mr. Christian guy lied to me. And then you see me up there, you're going to be even more mad. I'd much rather you be upset here because I hurt your feelings giving you the truth. I have to be honest about this. I, I'm not going to lie to people. I don't want to do that. Because not only do I hurt you, but I also hurt me by doing so. So I wanted to clarify that. And, and I hope that person's watching. Go read these scriptures deeper. And I'm going to put a list of 100 scriptures in the description. Go look at those scriptures, but don't just read the verse or the two verses. Read it in context. 
You need to go five above and five below. Get the real context of what that means. This guy partially quoted one verse and completely messed it up. When he would have read three verses, he would have known exactly what was being talked about there and what was being referred to. The flesh goes to the earth. The spirit of man goes to heaven. And according to verse 21, the spirit of the animal goes to the earth. So, again, do your own digging. This is why I harp on this. I can't harp on this enough. You yourself need to go and look and read the scriptures. Don't worry. Don't listen to another person. That stupid Sarah Bradley got, got on my channel again and started ranting and railing. She made another account giving me, oh, I corrected you because you're this and you're that. And there's people watching your videos that are reporting back to me. I know. I'm not stupid. In fact, I mentioned it in several videos. I know that all these other channels have their little minions hanging out in my videos. I block everyone I find so they can't comment and rail in the comment sections that are running back and telling them what I'm doing. What's so childish and silly to me is that you guys keep making new accounts just to try to comment, and you know I'm going to block it anyway. I don't care what you have to say. You're wrong. Sarah, you are not a prophet. You are not anointed by God to give prophecy when all you're doing is reading the news and the prophecies you did proclaim last year in September none of them came true you're a false prophet the bible says that's how you tell a false prophet you are calling and taking on a title and an anointing that you were not given by god but then you think that you have to go and correct everyone else because their understanding doesn't match yours your understanding isn't the only understanding grow up Stop making channels just so you can come on here and comment. Leave me alone. Go away. Go sit in the corner somewhere and do your thing and leave me be. I don't. I came to your channels one time. And I reached out to you and you wouldn't have it. You spit it back in my face immediately. And I was super nice when I first reached out to you. It became violently clear that you had no interest in this stuff. Go, go somewhere else. All of those people, all of y'all, if you're watching, that are that are on that, I don't care if you got a problem with me, but where does it tell you in the Bible that you're supposed to come here and harass me about it? Go away. If I come to your comment, I usually leave a quick comment or leave some scripture to correct an understanding. I leave, and I don't come back over there and mess with you anymore. That's not what I was called to do. You weren't called to do that either. But this is what we get, and this is what we deal with, and this is ridiculous and then I still got people getting in my comment section hey you need to stop doing this and just focus on this not your channel not your content not your videos go find a channel that you like where you, you like get what you like I promise all of you you will not get everything you like here that's not what I was called to do you're gonna get kicked in the heart sometimes you're gonna get some conviction sometimes it is what it is and again I'll reiterate the point my channel, my content, you will not dictate to me what my channel is going to do. That's what the Holy Spirit does. And I only go by the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Hence this video. I actually fought doing this video for 35 minutes. And finally, I couldn't take it anymore. The Holy Spirit was like, go do it. Go show them. Okay. And here we are. So, please, by all means... Show us your pride and go rant and rail in my comment section. And so you let me know who you are and I can block your account. And then please be stupid and come comment from another account you have. Since most of y'all have two to five accounts anyway. So I can block that one too. Nobody here wants to hear what you have to say unless you can come to us like an adult and talk like an adult. But that's not what we get. That's not what comes out of your mouth. That's not what comes across in your comments. It's your way or the highway, and I know some people are going to say, well, that's what you just said. No, it's not. It's your way or the highway, and everybody needs to believe exactly like you do, and if they don't, they're evil and they're cursed and they're not saved and they're going to hell. That's not what the Bible says. Now, as far as my way or the highway thing, that is not what I'm dictating here by my, con my channel, my content. Do I call you on the phone and say, hey, what video do you think I ought to do today? No, this is my channel. I put up videos according to what I'm led to do, not you. Rant and rail all you want, don't like it, unsub and go to another channel. 
I'm not doing this for subs, and I'm not doing this to make friends. I'm not doing this to placate people or to cater to their feelings. I'm doing this for truth because we've been lied to for so long. I know, I'm full aware people are watching my videos and going to run back and tell, tell somebody what I'm saying. I know they're downloading them and cutting them up and making other videos. I know that I'm doing saying things that are making people mad and offending them people. I do it on purpose. Hello? I know exactly what I'm doing. I know exactly what I'm being led to do by the Holy Spirit and the, the desired result it is intended to make. I'm very, very aware of what's going on. I'm not doing this in the dark and not doing this from a place of being clueless. And that, it seems to be there's a great big misunderstanding out there of all these 20 and 30 somethings thinking, oh, this guy's an idiot. He doesn't know what he's doing. Really? Go watch my other 1,500 videos. I wouldn't be here if I didn't know what I was doing. And every time you idiots comment, you get blocked anyway. So evidently I do know what I'm doing. I am not interested in having a, a conversation where you're going to try to dictate to me what I'm supposed to do. No. Go sit down. Let the adults talk. Have a, This is called being bold. You may disagree with that, but it doesn't matter. This is called standing up for what's right. If somebody runs into the grocery store, runs up to you, grabs the jar of spaghetti sauce out of your hand, smashes it on upside your head, and then punches you in the mouth, do you just... Oh, it's okay, and walk off? No. You call the cops. You deal with it. Or you run the guy down. Give him another pop in the mouth back. Or chuck a jar of spaghetti sauce at him. You react. You deal with it. You guys think I'm just going to lay down here and not do nothing when people do this? No. But that's that's what we get. Now, you know, if you don't... And I'm even going to title this video. If you don't want to hear this kind of stuff, don't click on it. You don't have to watch this stuff. You can just skip over to the stuff you like and keep on going. But the fact of the matter is, if the Holy Spirit leads me to do something like this, I have to do it. I tried fighting it. It doesn't work very well. I actually end up not sleeping for days if I do it. And then once I do it, everything's good. So look, dictate all you want. Show your pride all you want. Show your arrogance all you want. I don't care. This is about God. This is about Jesus Christ. And this is about the Word. This is not about you, and it's not about me. That's it. That's all i got to say about it. That's the truth. And every time somebody comes up and starts doing this, you're out of here. I'm just not interested. It's not about people... You know, somebody was saying, um, well, you don't like it when people are correcting you. You block all the people that correct you. No. I only block the stupid people that think that they're my, an adult or they're my parent, and they can talk to me like I'm a, their little kid. Wrong. That may work in your mind and in your world. That doesn't work in mine. That's not how things go here. That's not how things happen here. And even in the real world and reality, that's not how things happen. That may be how some people think. But they get gut checked real quick when they try it. And I guarantee you, all these people talking smack here, they don't talk smack in the streets. They're the people that wear the hoodie with their head down. They don't want confrontation. But on the internet, they feel powerful. You have no more power than what you had yesterday. You're just the same person. Nothing has changed. It's just this. That's it. That's all it is. Give me scripture. Give me fact. Show me. I got somebody right now sent me a PDF uh, of a bunch of stuff that refutes once saved, always saved, and eternal security. And I was like, okay, well, they're both the same thing, first of all. And the very first story, they talked about Jonah and what happened in Nineveh. And they, they started with one argument, but ended the, the story with, an, with a different argument. Wait a minute. You said you were talking about this, but now you're talking about this? I already know what's, what's going. I already know what's happening. And I'm going to, just like I always do, destroy it with Scripture. And put it in context, because the first group of Scriptures were taken out of context. Again, you have to read. You can't rely on any person to give you the right understanding. You, you must read the Scripture yourself well i'm not good at that stuff i don't know that stuff i don't have time excuses that's all i hear is excuses if you got time to go on facebook you got time to read the bible if you got time to watch netflix you got time to read the bible if you got time to be on the internet you got time to read the bible i'm doing a video and read the bible hello is this thing on 
When you're going to the bathroom, you have time to read the Bible. My scriptures are with me everywhere I go. Somebody got to go to an appointment and I got to drive them. Guess what I'm doing in the parking lot? Reading the Bible. You always have time. Give your time to God. Everybody thinks, oh, I, I tithe 10% of my paycheck. Tithe some of your time to him and learn more about him. Don't trust me. Don't trust anyone else. Trust God. That's what all this is meant to do. Why do you think this, all this stuff is happening with the coronavirus? God didn't send the coronavirus. He used the coronavirus. The coronavirus was created by man. This version of it. There's a bunch of versions. He used it to put us and humble us and put us down at home. Park it. Now you need to look at me. And what happened? A bunch of people looked at him. Guys, this is the grand finale. If you don't get it now, they need to lift these restrictions so I can go get my hair did and my nails did. I'm glad that's the big focus in your life. Ridiculous. Now see, if I was a comedian saying this, nobody would have a problem with it. <laughs> He's so funny. But it's because I'm a Christian trying to get some biblical truth out there. Nothing but hatred. Well, except for you guys who support me. I love all y'all. Y'all support me. You understand. You know that I'll make mistakes. You know that it may come across harsh and coarse. You look past that and look to what the truth is behind it. You guys have understanding and discernment. You test this stuff. Thank you. I appreciate that to no end. But to those, that small group of people that's floating around out there, that roof, well, actually technically it's a bigger group of people than us, but refuse, refuse to take the time to sit down and talk about the issue. Every single atheist I've ever talked to over talks me because they don't want to hear the truth. Every single self-proclaimed Christian who is, it doesn't understand what certain scriptures, scriptures say, when I try to help them understand, answering their question when they ask it, talks over me because they don't want to hear the truth. What good are you if you're not willing to hear the truth? Now people come in the comments and they start yelling at me, oh, you don't want to hear the truth, you didn't give me any. Give me some truth. Give me scripture. That's what I'm interested in. I'm not interested in your opinion. Give me scripture. Show me what the scripture says. Now let's circle back around into Ecclesiastes 3. You want to talk about pets going to heaven? Well, going to heaven? Well, evidently, verse 21 speaks pretty clear about what's ha what happens. And like I said, go to the description. There's a whole list of scriptures in there that you can go look at that talk about this subject. Take the time to go through them and read each one in context. Don't trust me. Don't trust anyone else. Trust the Word of God. I can't reiterate this point enough. I can't pound this nail any further into the 2x4. If you don't get it, it's your problem, not mine. I can, all I can do is tell you the truth. You've got to be willing to accept it. And Sarah, stop sending people to watch my videos and harass me in my comment sections. Stop making new accounts just so you can comment and, and correct me when you can't even get the scripture right in the first place. You know how many people have come back and told me, you know, I did what you tried to do and get her to, to proclaim Jesus in the flesh and she won't do it. I know. Why do you think I gave up? And no, I didn't send them. They did that on their own because they were curious. And you proved me right because you aren't walking according to what the Holy Spirit prompts. You are not working from a biblical standpoint. If you don't like it, that's fine. You don't have to like it. I'm not asking anybody to like it. I'm not asking anybody to believe me. However, I do expect you to act like an adult and conduct yourself as such. And that means if you want to correct me, you better bring some scripture and not your opinion and your, your lack of punctuation paragraph after paragraph. It's almost impossible to discern what you're saying. Your sentence structure is atrocious. At least make an attempt to do it right. That way I can try to discern what you're talking about. Now, I, I'm not asking too much. Maybe I am. I don't know. Anyway, guys, I know people are going to be upset. I don't care. That's where the problem is. They think I care. They think I worry about what people think. I don't worry about what people think. If every single person unsub for my channel, I'd still do videos. I'm not here for that. I'm here to proclaim the truth. And funny enough, even if I lost all my subscribers, people would still watch the videos.
But see, the opposite is happening. I'm getting more subscribers. People are hearing the truth. They're understanding, you know what? That's actually what that scripture says. And they're believing it and they're changing their minds. Thank God. You guys are turning to God. You're believing to God. You've testified that your prayer life is better. You've testified that your, your, your confidence is better. Your boldness is better. Your understanding of the scripture is better. Many of you have testified that, you know what? I've been doing exactly what you said. I've been reading my Bible more. Wow. It's just opening up to me like I've never, I've never seen this stuff before. Many of you have taken the trick reading five above and five below, and they're like, you know what? It truly does change the meaning of that verse. Somebody gives me a verse and says, this is what this means. I go read it in context, totally different. They're twisting the scriptures. I don't have to prove it. It proves itself. All I got to do is put it out there. When you put a fly trap out, do you go catch the flies and stick them on the fly trap? No. Put it out, let it do its job. I'm putting the truth out there. I'm letting it do its work. Some people are coming around. Some people are turning to the light and getting on the path. Some people aren't. Some people are going the exact opposite direction. Does that mean I'm wrong? Well, it's the Bible doing it, not me. It's the scripture telling the truth, not me. That's why I give so much scripture in every video. That's why I go out of my way to try to share this stuff with you guys. Thank you all that support me. I thank all of you that actually take the time to listen. I thank all of you that disagree with me yet still have fellowship because you know it's not about us agreeing. It's about us being followers of Christ. Several of the apostles didn't agree with each other, yet they still had fellowship. They were still apostles. They set the example. The Bible gives us everything we need. All we have to do is be willing to go read it and take the time to go through it. Take the time to be honest with ourselves. And not take that those words and twist them to match what we want them to mean. But instead, change our understanding to match what those words really mean. And that is a face value interpretation. This Bible is not subject to private interpretation. It is subject to God's interpretation. And it's up to us to do the best we can to find the truth in it. So, please, if you're from that other camp or... Sarah sent you over, or somebody else sent you over, by all means, go run tell that. Go, go let them know, oh, you should have heard what he said. Go gossip. You're doing exactly what the Bible says not to do. Go run over there and say, oh, you, you, you ought to hear this, all this heresy and all that kind of stuff. Well, that's great. What scripture are you talking about? Because that's what I give in most of my videos of scripture. This is one of those rare videos where I don't give a lot of scripture. So what scripture were you talking about that was heretical? Because it's the Bible you have the problem with, not me. I'm giving you what the scripture says. But I'll be the whipping boy. Come on. They did it to Jesus, they'll do it to me too. Most grace preachers are having a heck of a time right now because a bunch of y'all have come out of the woodwork. But I'm still going to keep pushing scripture. And I'm still going to keep pounding this stuff home. Now, if you're still here watching the video, <laughs> it was so funny because I was questioning whether I should do this video. And... I was like, all right, Lord, I'm going to do evening prayer. And these scriptures are going to be for evening prayer. I'm going to do evening prayer video about trials and tribulations. And the first one, James 1.12, Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. For when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. And you know what? This is a trial. This is those, tri those trials and tribulations that we go through in life. And I was like, Lord, what am I doing wrong that so many people are coming against like that? I started to question. Then I pushed it away. I said, no, that's not how I should be thinking about this. I should be asking, Lord, am I doing this according to your will? Then I got this. Right before I pushed that little red button to turn the camera, to the video on. I was like, okay. And I read a few more down. I was like, okay, I get it, Lord. I get, you're talking, I get it. The scriptures told me exactly what I needed to know. Stay strong and keep doing what you're doing. Look. It's not about being right or wrong. It's not about being successful or unsuccessful. How long did Jeremiah preach and not a single person listened to him? And he told God, what, what good is it for me to be a prophet? And God said, don't worry about it. I don't need you to be successful. I don't need you to reach people. I just need you to do what I told you to do. Just be faithful. Josiah, eight years old. 
king of Israel. I just need you to be faithful. I don't need you to do it right. Just be faithful. Noah, 120 years he preached. Not a single person, not one listened to him. Not one got on the ark. You imagine that man's ego was probably tore to shreds. He preached on top of that big old mast of that boat for 120 years and everybody laughed at him and mocked him. The Bible says that. Not one person, not one. It's not about being successful. It's not about doing it 100% right. It's about doing it. He doesn't care what you're doing. He wants to know why you're doing it. Are you stepping out in faith? Are you stepping out into the rain and the mud to plant that garden. Because if you're willing to, what God says is, don't worry. You just do what I gave you to do. I'll provide the increase. Remember that scripture? So all that came flooding back to me when I read these and I was like, okay, I got it. I got it. So these are going to be for evening prayer, which is going to be right after this. So anyway... Sorry, guys, but you know what? I got to talk about this stuff and I got to get it out because, first of all, the Holy Spirit prompted, prompted this. But second of all, the truth has to remain evident and it has to remain in the forefront. We can't put our ideas and what we believe and what we think we know in front of that gospel and in front of the word. The word is the authority. Your compass needle has to be anchored in one place. Otherwise, it doesn't know where to point. And in order for it to point true north, you have to be rooted in something. And that's this Bible right here. That's this scripture in these words. That's what we have to be rooted in. But far too many people want to take the easy way out. And they want to say, you know what? What that guy said sounds good to me. That's what I'm going to believe. Not ever thinking that that person may, have been, may be being led by an evil spirit to deceive Christians. You know, he doesn't go after the people that he's already got caught up in all these different evil things. He's not in their lives. He's after us. He wants us. He's not dealing with them. He's dealing with us. And it's a daily battle you have to fight. Step out in faith. Right or wrong, successful or unsuccessful, step out in faith and stick with the truth. You won't do it 100% accurately. But I guarantee you, if you do it and you do it faithfully, you will be rewarded for it. How do I know that? The Bible says so. I love you guys. I'll see you in the evening prayer.